Hi Nima, it's Thursday, March 8th, 2012, and you are watching The Four of Us. Sorry about the mess. 100 pounds snow, doll. Gotta keep a low profile. They'll be watching The Four of Us. You didn't want P.I., you want some pastry to pin it on. I killed him! <laughs> I will start off by congratulating the professor on completing my challenge. I was impressed by your extensive knowledge of bio art. Now that the challenge has been completed, life can carry on and become art, or a leather jacket, as the case may be. I'm feeling a little bit brain dead at this moment in time because my spring break is quickly approaching and I spent the entire day in the library putting together a presentation on the Sevel Mayerhold. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. This has actually been a recent problem in my theater class over the past few weeks. But honestly, who is allowed to judge us when we have to pronounce names like Konstantin Stanislavski, Vladimir Namirovich Danchenko? Can I buy a vowel? I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if these guys had nicknames. Then we could just have, like, Voldmer and Konstan and Chuck. But no, apparently even when these guys were children, they had names that took entire alphabets to spell. Can you imagine them playing the name game? Stanislavski, Bobana, Banabana, Stanislavski. I bet they could never find their names on those little motorcycle license plates, or Lisa Frank jewelry and stationery. What parent would knowingly deprive their children of that personalized merchandise? I, I don't know. Speaking of awkward names that will never be on Lisa Frank stationery, recently I read an article on Stelois Arcadio, who is a performance artist who implanted an ear onto his arm. The ear was grown in a laboratory from cells and implanted into the 61 year old's forearm in year 2006. That's six years ago. The process was a tiny bit confusing to me, but the artist intended to have a Bluetooth microphone implanted in the ear. The intention being that the third ear would be able to pick up sounds and transmit them by the artist opening his mouth. So basically when it's just on the forearm, it's like a cell phone. And when he opens his mouth, it's like putting the cell phone on speaker. Raise your hand if you think this would be an ideal plot for some form of sci-fi dystopian thriller. Raise your hand if your cell phone is ever 10 feet away from you for extended periods of time. To be honest, the part of this article that really freaked me out the most was the fact that he was having an ear transplanted onto his arm. There's something about that mental imagery that just makes me go, Oh, what the fuck? As crazy as this concept is, my cell phone really is like an extension of my own brain. It's never outside of arm's reach for me. Why not actually have it attached to my arm? At least then I wouldn't have that all-consuming fear that one day I'm going to drop it in the toilet or something gross. Although to be honest, I'd probably still use my cell phone after I dropped it in the toilet. I mean, if it still worked, you know? I should get back to my presentation on Mayor Holt. Okay, that's all for today. Bye Sarah, bye Lily. Be I will see you on Tuesday. Oh, what the fungus?